Welcome back everyone. Following a tough defeat to the Mavericks, the Lakers were able to get back on track tonight, getting their 10th win of the season along with their third overall road win. And in my opinion, it really was a good one for them too. I mean, it might not have been ideal to give up 40 points during the first quarter alone, though I think we've come to expect that from them at this point, but they were able to play a really good game when taking everything into consideration. Now, they obviously had LeBron and Anthony Davis available, which are by far their two most important players, but they are playing without a number of their key role players tonight. In addition to Jared Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, and Cam Reddish, they were also playing without Rui Hachimura, who is set to miss around a week with a nasal fracture. And with that in mind, that left their once very deep rotation looking rather thin out there tonight, with only 8 total players getting playing time for them tonight. And not only that, but a guy who is completely out of their rotation has now entered their starting lineup, with that player being Max Christie. And despite many people doubting him after having a rough start, he finally appears to be gaining a rhythm. And it's really coming at the perfect time for them too. He ended up playing 33 total minutes out there tonight, only falling behind LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Torian Prince. And within that time frame, he was able to put up 12 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, shoot 5 of 7 from the field, and 2 of 4 from the 3 point line. In addition to that, he played a big part in limiting Donovan Mitchell out there too, a guy who currently averages over 29 points per game this season. However, he was only able to put up 22 points on 4 of 18 shooting from the field, a rough 22.2%. Now, Torrey and Prince definitely played a role in that as well, along with Anthony Davis and really their entire team, but Christie took on more of that assignment during the second half. And regardless, I really like the way he looked out there tonight. And during a rare night when LeBron James shot only 34% from the field and 11% from three, they needed everything they could get from everybody else. And luckily for them, that's exactly what they got out there. Apart from Torrey and Prince, everybody who got playing time had at least 10 points out there tonight with Austin Reeves even putting up a double-double off the bench for them, dropping 15 points to go along with 10 assists to only 2 turnovers. And big shout out to Reeves too, he has taken to coming off the bench incredibly well in a short amount of time, and it's really played a big part in their team looking a whole lot better lately. However, we definitely cannot go without mentioning Anthony Davis. Despite having only 2 shot attempts during the first quarter, largely due to them failing to game the ball, he finished the game with 32 points, 13 rebounds, and 3 blocks while shooting 13 of 20 from the field. Absolutely dominant out there. And the big takeaway for me here is that despite not getting in the ball that much, Anthony Davis was able to make an impact. Their opponents have really been keying in on lately, but he was able to get around that by collecting 5 offensive rebounds, along with taking advantage of his limited opportunities. With all of that being said though, I'll let you hear from the Lakers about their win tonight. And after listening, let me know your thoughts about this game in the comments down below. 71 in the first half, just 44 for Cleveland in the second. Now, what changed on that end of the floor? Um, they made shots early. I mean, George, he ain't hit three threes in the first half. Um, a couple of the guys had some threes in the first half, uh, even a little bit in the second. Uh, we just had to impose our will on the defensive end, um, got stops. Uh, just got our, held him to one one shot, uh, which has kind of been you know a little kryptonite of ours. Um, but for the most part, you know we, we just played well together on both ends of the floor, talking, communicating, figuring out schemes. Obviously, this is a good team. Uh, also, Darius Garland didn't play in the second half, so um, not sure what the injury was, but you know that also you know helped us. And uh, you know, like I said, it was a good team when it starts the road trip. You guys are missing some key pieces, uh, especially kind of your rangy uh, yep. type of bigs, right, and backups, and Rui and Vanderbilt and Cam on top of Vincent all out. Uh, what did you have to do to piece together the rotation with those guys out? Guys stepped up. Um, Max came in uh, starting for the second game in a row and stepped up, made some big shots, some big plays defensively, obviously late, in, late game on Mitchell. Um, guys just got to step up. You know, you're missing Cam. Uh, Rui be out. Not sure how long. Not sure how Cam is out. How long Cam is out? Um, still waiting to get Vando back, Gabe. So guys are um, just playing their role. See Wood came in early and had 13 big points in the first half. So you no know, Jackson Hayes with his athletic ability catching lobs and blocking shots, protecting the rim. So everybody got to step up um, until we get healthy. All right, three more games on this trip. Go get some rest, man. Yes, sir, appreciate it, Mike. LeBron, clearly a very efficient game for AD on offense. 
Uh, just wondering, as a, like as a star player, you look at the top 10, 15 guys in the league, not many are asked to do as much as AD is defensively. And just kind of wondering how you balance then what you as a teammate or what people expect from him on offense, you know, while also having that defensive end and how much of that is just fair when you ask about the best players in the league. Yeah, I mean, we expect a lot um, from AD. Um, you know, we want him to be aggressive offensively at the same time, anchor our defense. And, um, you know, tonight was an AD game. I mean, I thought uh, defensively, you know, out there with a lot of those trees with Evan Mobley and and, and also um, obviously Jared Allen. And so, you know, I thought he did a great job of uh, offensively attacking those guys, but at the same time trying to defend and, you know, cover the glass when those guards were getting into the paint, trying to, you know, change shots at the rim, um, you know, get block shots, whatever, and clean glass at the same time. So, um, AD was big time tonight for us. Dave? Um, when AD has a game like he did uh, against Dallas where the, the points aren't there and you guys as a team almost steal it, um, you know, had you won that game, maybe it doesn't you know, get as much attention to what, what, what didn't go right. But is, is there a group recognition of ways to maximize him? Because obviously he's not a guard. He's not always having the ball in his hand as, as other positions would would on the court? Um, I think just being you know conscientious about finding him. You know, uh, he sets 95% of our pick and rolls. Um, you know, and when when he has an opportunity to catch it in the pocket or if the bigs are up, we find him in lives, find him in transition, when you get an opportunity to seal, whatever, we have to find him. I mean, it's that simple. And, um, you know, and, and there's also times where, you know, we have certain play calls that we can call on the fly that can help him get the ball as well. But even if he's not even shooting, it's just him touching the ball. And I think from the beginning of the game, um, he, I think he, um, you know, after right after, you know, my, I think my and one, when we got an opportunity to call our first set, he was, um, he touched the ball, you know, and, um, you know, and, and throughout the whole game, he continued to touch the ball. And that's, that's big time for our, for our ball club. And going big picture, I mean, barring like a, a finals matchup, we're probably in the handful of games left in this arena category for you. What type of emotions are dredged up um, coming back here? And is there any sense of savoring um, a night like tonight because uh, we don't have a, a ton of them left? Yeah, I think uh, for one, I mean, you know, you're able to come on this floor and obviously the, the main thing, keeping the main thing is, you know, trying to get a win. We want to continue to get better as a franchise, as the Lakers going through the season. But, um, you know, it's always special to come back here, you know, and, uh, you know, I felt that. Um, you know, uh, a feeling of it as well. We went back to Miami, just knowing the history, but uh, even a little bit more here because I spent 11 years here. I, I did four years in Miami, but spent 11 years here and being able to, you know, to come back after my Miami stint and and, uh, and, and win a championship here uh, for this franchise, for this city. Um, I think it was like a 52-year drought or something like that. Um, you know, in the city of Cleveland for any sports team. I think that was just something I would never forget. Um, you know, no matter how old I get, you know, I'll always remember that moment. And uh, I don't know, so stepping back on this floor is always a pretty cool feeling, looking up in, up in there and just uh, being a part of you know, pretty much all the banners, uh, you know, um, you know, in, in this arena. So, um, and, and the number one banner, the one that sits in the middle, was that 16 championship. So that's um, pretty cool. Locking in, um, trying to be better on the ball, you know, uh, all of those guys, just, they, they have a tough, hell, four-headed monster over there with, obviously, Donovan and Darius and Max and Karras. I mean, they put a lot of pressure on your perimeter defense. Uh, and then, you know, those two guys in the middle, Jared and um, Evan, he, uh, they both can catch anything at the rim, around the rim. So it's a great balance, off, balanced uh, offensive attack that they have. So. We really had to dig our heels into, you know, communicating, being aggressive in picking roles and DHOs, uh, but first and foremost, being not being as loose on the ball, being better on the ball, our own ball defense, I thought, improved. And the times we did make a miss, you know, we didn't have that uh, offensive rebounding bug bite us to that tonight. We did a much, much better job closing out defensive possessions. It was a rare off shooting night for LeBron, but AD seemed to step in, uh, plus a couple other guys. Like 23 of his points came in the second half. What were you seeing from him on offense to carry things? Just again, like I said before the game, allowing things to come to him, um, just making his reads and going, got into a rhythm, and then uh, he just was in attack mode. Like it was the play to be made, and uh, so he we he, he, he needed all 23 of those. So it was uh, great to see him step up and provide that scoring punch. Darvin, um, 
you mentioned pregame about how you guys have to have this next man up mentality. That's the only way you guys have a, cha- a chance through this stretch. But when you look at Max um, and kind of these last three games where he's been sort of forced into action, um, what have you seen from him in terms of rhythm and confidence? And were there moments tonight um, that stuck out to you as, you know, potentially maybe a big step for him? Oh, absolutely. A matchup like that, you know, all of those guys he had to go, you know, he had to try to defend. Uh, Karras, Darius, Max, Donovan, Donovan down the stretch toward the end of the game. Like, that's that's a huge, huge challenge for a young player like Max, and but one that's much needed. And so um, he was awesome tonight. We gave him a shout-out after the game. And, you know, everyone's here. Pull, everyone here is pulling for him. Know how special he can be. Know how special he already is. And the biggest thing for him is the more minutes he gets. You know, the more comfortable he gets. We had to rely on him some last year, his rookie year, due, due to some of the same circumstances. And so uh, he was ready to go. Kid works on his game feverishly and is constantly engaged in terms of watching film and making sure he knows what to do when he's called upon. And uh, I think you saw that tonight.